Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Quick Twist TV. My name is Marlon and today we're taking a look at the Fujifilm X100, one of the most highly anticipated cameras out on the market right now. It's highly, um, it's highly uh, anticipated, like I said, um, and it's actually on crazy back order. And if you want one, you're gonna have to find a pre-order right now because um, there's no other way to get one. Now, um, today we're taking a look at the pros and cons about this camera. These are my opinions about the camera and why I believe that everyone should actually grab this camera. Okay? Um, if you ha um, but before we go ahead and do that, I'd like to say thank you for my subscribers and thank you for your support. If you aren't a subscriber already, go ahead and do so right now by clicking above. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them at the bottom. You can also give me a thumbs up to let's just let you know just let me know that I'm doing such a great job with these videos. If you have Twitter, you can follow me at Twitter at Marlon underscore Perez and you can find me there and I'll give, if you have any questions, you can send them in via Twitter and I'll be more than happy to reply back right like that. Now, um, today's episode is actually brought to us, brought to you by the clothing brand called The Others Brand and um, I'd like to say thank you for Anthony Lam and Andrew Lau for actually getting this stuff to me. Um, they're a fantastic group of guys and I, I'm more than happy to promote their stuff. Um, that's theothersbrand.com. You can find them on Twitter, The Others Brand, um, and that's it. So let's get this video review started. First of all, um, let's talk about the build quality. This camera is absolutely fantastic when it comes to build quality. Um, when it comes to knobs, everything just feels so tactile. It's great. Um, at the top, we have the shutter speed dial, and we have um, EC compensation right on the side. And we also have, at the front, sorry, we have the aperture dial. Now, um, the lens cap is a push on style and a lot of people have been wondering does it actually stay on? Well, does it stay on? It does stay on. So, um, if you are quite critical like me when it comes to keeping your lens in great condition, you're gonna, you're gonna buy a filter, okay? Um, the reason why I'm gonna buy a filter is because sometimes I get my fingers in the way of the lens and I definitely don't want that to happen. So, which is why I bought the hood and the adapter for it. Uh, it comes with a nice X100 pouch, and this is what you get. Two metal rings, metal, metal rings, and what you do is you remove the, you remove the, the cover thing at the front of the lens, grab the adapter, and you just screw it on like that, and then you grab your hood, and you just um, twist it on like that. Now, the lens cap won't work, so you're gonna have to keep the lens cap and the hood adapter aside, and you can go ahead and do that. You keep it on the side, keep it safe if you do wanna get it back. Now, this provides a good amount of physical protection from someone touching the lens or stuff getting in front of the lens. Um, if you are wanting a little bit more protection, you can actually use a UV filter. This is a 010 B plus W filter. That's a silver brass ring. You can go ahead and do so by just screwing it on, uh, well, if I can get it, and you just screw it on and there's, your, there's more protection for you. Now, if you're street shooting, I would highly recommend you to grab a CPL filter as well as a UV filter. You can, so you can shoot through glass um, and uh, get people's reactions when it comes to street shooting. Because this camera is absolutely fantastic when it comes to street shooting. Now, the hood is actually vented, and which doesn't get in the way of when you use the optical viewfinder, which is what we'll talk about next. Now, the optical viewfinder on this camera is absolutely fantastic. Well, how many times have I used the word fantastic? It's the best word to describe this camera. Now, when it comes to the back of the camera, when it comes to the optical viewfinder, um, you get a view similar to this. Now, here we have grid lines that are on display. We also have an electronic level, a live view, um, a, sorry, not a live view, but a live histogram, which is, which is fantastic when you're shooting. And um, you get a distance scale and your settings at the bottom. Okay? Um, I mean, when you use the optical viewfinder on this camera, okay, when you use the optical viewfinder, you have um, frame lines. Not only is the camera 100% into the viewfinder, it's actually 133. So within the viewfinder, you'll see frame lines inside the viewfinder. And you can actually, the great thing about this is that you can actually see people walk into the shot and then you can take the picture and you capture their complete emotion. It really helps you anticipate the perfect moment. Now, the great thing about this is that there's no blackout period, which is also great. Um, and this prevents, uh, and this really helps you know that when you actually took that shot, if you didn't take the perfect shot, you can actually see it happen. Now, at the front of the lens, at the front of the camera, we have a 23 millimeter lens matched with an APS-C size sensor, giving us a 35 millimeter equivalent um, focal length. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, 
because I personally use a 5D Mark II with a 35L, and as a backup camera, I use a 24L on a 70. Um, both of these are 35 millimeter equivalent cameras, and I love you shooting with primes. I don't feel limited with primes. Um, if you're a zoom um, person, um, I don't know, that's just my opinion, okay? Um, so yeah, that's it. The lens produces amazing color. Oh, and it's just, I don't know, amazing color. Here's some pictures um, that I shot with the X100. Uh, I shot this at an event, and this uses high ISO, which is what we're talking about next. The high ISO capabilities of this camera is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I am more than comfortable with shooting this camera at ISO 2500, 3200, uh, 4000, 5000, and it's just fantastic. I mean, I personally just use my 70 at uh, the max of 1250, and probably my 5D Mark II at the max of 3200. Again, these are my opinions. I find that the X100 to be fantastic at high ISO settings, and it's just impressive coming from a camera this small, or coming from a camera at this type of market. It's, it's just so good. Um, what else can I talk to you about next? Now, um, this camera has a di uh, dynamic range feature um, that you can choose between 100, 200, and 400. Um, it really helps to expand the dynamic range when you're setting it at 400. Um, it's really great for those low light shots. Now, um, I want to talk to you about the, IS, uh, the auto ISO on this camera. It's really smart. You can select the, sh the minimum shutter speed um, and, the, and the max limit of your sh um, ISO setting and your minimum ISO setting. Um, so you don't really have to care about ISO. And you know what? I've set it at 3200 max, and I personally don't care about ISO because this camera can perform in high ISO settings. Now, the cons. So what sucks about this camera? I mean, like, every camera has something to suck about, you know what I mean? Um, so what sucks about this camera? First of all, the, f the first thing that sucks is the focusing system. It's not a face detection system. Face detection system, similar to what you'd see on a 5D or a 7D or any SLR system. The contra it's a contrast-based um, focusing system, um, similar to what you'd find in a point-and-shoot, because this is a point-and-shoot. Uh, and it's similar to what you'd also find in an EVO camera. An EVO stands for Electronic Viewfinder Interchangeable Lens Camera, which is like the GF2 and those Olympus cameras, okay? Now, um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, whenever, you use the, um, whenever you use the autofocus um, system, you, in order to change the focus point, you have to hold on to the AF point, you hold on to the AF button, and then select your AF point. You have about 25 AF points when you're in the Electronic Viewfinder mode, and um, that's it. I mean that's that's what focusing is. Now, when it comes to manually focusing, you can use that. You can use a mode for this, and you can then turn the manual focus ring here. This is ridiculous. Okay, um, when you're using the manual focus, it's a fly-by wire system similar to what you'd find on an 85 millimeter 1.2 lens, and it takes nine turns. What the frick, right? It takes nine turns to go from medium medium focusing distance to infinity. That's ridiculous. And when you use an optical viewfinder, it's, there's no way to use, there's no way to know that something is sharp or not. It's, I don't know, it's ridiculous. So if you're using this camera, just use it in autofocus mode. I mean, yeah, that's just my opinion again. I don't know, that sucked about the camera. Anyway, um, another thing you want to do is get more batteries. This, the battery life on this camera sucks, okay? I have about three Fujifilm batteries and it takes about 100 shots or 150 shots until the camera dies and I'm only utilizing the um, electronic viewfinder. I mean, come on, really? So if you're cheap, go ahead and buy the impact batteries, they're five bucks and they also perform the same. I mean, I'm sure these batteries come from the same place anyways. Okay, um, next thing you know, you're gonna buy, you're gonna want to buy a really fast memory card. This is a um, SanDisk Pro Extreme Pro UHS-1, um, 45, uh, 45 megabytes per second card. Uh, it's really fast, and even with this fastest card, the camera takes two to three seconds to clear the buffer, okay? Um, and, w and I'm shooting a large RAW and a large J, uh, sorry, a full RAW and a large JPEG fine um, images, and it takes two and a half seconds to clear the buffer. That's ridiculous, okay? Um, whenever the camera is clearing the buffer, it freezes up all the buttons, uh, and I can sh I can still shoot and change my aperture setting when I'm in aperture priority uh, mode, but I can't do anything else like move my AF point. It's it's honestly quite ridiculous. Okay, um, and what else can I say about the camera? Sometimes the camera freezes up, but I'm sure that they'll fix that in the firmware issues. Um, 
Yeah, and that's it. So who's this camera for before we end the video? This camera is for anybody looking for a general purpose camera with a general purpose lens. Um, a 35 millimeter uh, lens is really the perfect um, general purpose lens. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, match that with a small compact body. It's perfect for street, candid shots, family shots, wherever you go, it's great. It's perfect travel companion. This camera is fantastic. And I would highly recommend it for anybody uh, although the focusing system might suck, or the battery life might suck, or the buffer, whatever sucks. Um, the image quality of this camera is absolutely fantastic. I love the compact size. I love the optical viewfinder. It's unlike what you'd get from an SLR. It's, I don't know, it's fantastic. But whatever you do, don't, I'm not saying get rid of all your, um, get rid of all your SLR stuff. Those, are, those stuff is still great. I would never get rid of my system. Um, so yeah. But this camera really complements it. I'll probably use it for events um, because of its low light capabilities and high image quality. And that's it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Quick Twist TV. If you have any questions regarding the X100, go ahead and do so by letting me know at the bottom. You can also send them in via Twitter. My Twitter name is at Marlon underscore Perez and you can send them in via that way. And that's it for this video. Uh, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Here we go. Click. Was it actually on? Hey, the battery's out. That's lame. <laughs> See you later.